fix this angle. Sounds good. What's up, everybody? Happy Monday. Hope you all found all of the eggs yesterday. It was amazing. And your Monday has been as wonderful as you guys are. So, our friend Tiffany approved of our most recent sample piece which is a, this one, super heavy because I've put many a coat on it. Oops. What's up, at Mac? Susan, Christy, Nancy, Shelly, what is up? So this one was approved, therefore, I always like to do the piece just one more time to ensure my ability to replicate it. So that's what I'm gonna do today on this one. The piece that I'm pouring actually on on is, um, sorry about the ruckus. This red is, not the same red we used the first time, but sometimes you just gotta use what you got. Right? Right. And so, I'm gonna set up our handy dandy mixer to mix while we are um, spray painting the countertop. Nope, the sample. So how much do we need? If we're gonna do like four ounces a square foot, let's just round up to be safe. Let's just do like 20 ounces. I think that'll be a good estimate. Uh, if you don't know, I am using Stone Coat Countertops Art Coat for the sample piece because there is a lot of white in what will ultimately be this finish and uh, the Stone Coat Art Coat is the best in, in my very humble, not expert, opinion at preventing and warding off any ambering or yellowing. So I have um, resined my this together. I'm trying to pull out the little button. This is the Istoyo mixing resin mixer it's down in the description box i have under this video if you click the amazon link it'll have the istoyo mixer i don't know if they have the stand along with it now but one can hope also if you hear a dog in the background i have two and their dad just went to the store, so they're uh, left to their own devices, which means they're just gonna bark. So as per use, if you use anything, be in a well-ventilated space. Yeah, this red is way brighter than the last one, but it's just a placeholder. So I don't have a respirator on, but that is because you wouldn't be able to hear me that well if I had one on. So hold off all of your judgments. All right, now I need a white. <gasps> Judy! Hey, Kathy Carr, how are you doing? 
That's fancy. Well, it will be fancy like in just a minute. Hey, why don't you like go chew on this, huh? So in a minute, I will show you the first examples of this piece that we did. The client wanted aquas and red. Actually, initially it was red and white, and I said I'm not doing a candy cane countertop, and then we kind of met in the middle with kind of this palette. Anytime I do a countertop, I always underpaint like this. Underpainting always brings out a lot of depth. And underpainting with complementary colors or colors opposite on the color wheel will bring out the vibrancy in the presenting color. So for this, for example, it's going to be mostly white and then aqua and then a little bit of red for an afterthought. So you can kind of see some red through, but it's pretty faint. And I actually just released a blog on my website, artisttilldeath.com, going over um, some concepts behind color theory and why using accenting or complementary colors will kind of give your painting or countertop or floor or whatever a little bit of extra pizzazz. At least they're playing, right? This could be a finish all on its own. Oh, so many jokes. Oh, I'm going to take it to the next, next this level. What's up, Christy? So, hello everyone that's here. If you haven't um, subscribed to my channel yet, I hope you do so. It doesn't cost anything and it really helps my channel to grow and become more relevant in the um, the YouTube space. All right, I'm gonna switch this to three minutes to finish mixing and this should be dry by then. I'm gonna go ahead and go over the colors I'm gonna use. And then also, We'll list them as well. Use some of my handy dandy patent already in existence at this point, stir sticks. These are great because they're reusable. I'm just gonna scrape the edge of this before I go over the colors so that that can go ahead and be incorporating in my resin. If you've never mixed resin before, I have some great beginner videos, but also I go over things pretty, um, pretty beginner level in terms of explanations. So if you're not a beginner, I mean, if you are a beginner, you don't have to leave, just hang out with us. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. We have a great group here and we love to answer any and all questions. Hey Shannon and New Waverly. That sounds like a beautiful place. Let me get some cups. So the colors I'm gonna use on this piece are, ugh, I almost just fell. You probably wouldn't have seen it, but now you know I almost just fell. The colors we're gonna use are the same as what we did on our last sample piece, but in case you didn't see that video, I'm going to list them. <coughs> Yo, I almost just tripped at the same spot. We have puppy gates everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to be using Shooting Star or Milky Way from Resin Art or Color Art. I'm gonna use Bermuda Bay from Just Resin. I'm gonna use Tiffany, or Breakfast at Tiffany's from Just Resin, Titanium White from Just Resin, and Almond 
from just resin and probably some liquid copper that is not from just resin. It's by actually Montana. All right, I have all my stir sticks. My resin is almost completely mixed up at this point. Can you guys hear the puppies in the background? Canvas, it's enough. I'm just happy they're playing, you know? For a minute, I thought Bowie was not gonna be interested. But he's doing good being a big, a big brother. Hey Libby, what's up Claret? TG, I just realized I didn't ship your um, thing thing, so I'll be shipping that tonight or in the morning. Tudor's coming over tonight to ship orders, so if you guys have orders in and you haven't gotten a notification yet today, Tudor will be here momentarily to assist in orders. So yeah. Let's give this one more stir to make sure all of our sides are scraped. If you've never mixed up resin before, it's always important to make sure you scrape your sides and the bottom of your cup and the stir stick because, let me see if I can, okay, there. Do you see, uh, you see right in here, some slight, almost looks like, clear stretch marks in the resin. You see them right in here. I hope you can see them anyways. See those like swirls? It looks like something spinning, but it's not. That is not incorporated resin. So your part A and part B are not fully mixed together. And that's kind of the whole goal when you mix your part A and part B. You need to make sure everything's fully, completely incorporated. Okay. She is barking with her mouth full at Bowie. Which I'm kind of thankful for because she's a lot louder when she doesn't have a chewy in her mouth. Anyways, so now that our resin is completely mixed, apologies if you can hear the puppy in the background. Come on, Canvas, leave it. Trying to find her something that she can chew on. She has a chewy in her mouth. Okay, I'm done worrying. All right, so let's start mixing colors. Thank you, Donna, for reminding people to leave um, some thumbs up for me. It really helps my channel when you guys do that. Okay, so we have our resin. And now we have our cups. So we want mostly white and translucent white. We do translucents to build depth. And then I'm actually gonna mix, we'll do translucent white, opaque white, Milky Way. And then we're actually just going to use these little medicine cups to mix our other colors because the client wants a mostly white. And in order to not waste and to keep myself in check on what I need to be mixing, I just don't make that much of my other colors because then I'll want to, I'll want to use them. Kind of like if you go to a buffet and you get a big plate, you're going to want to fill it instead of just getting a smaller plate and then going back for 
seconds, and for me, sometimes thirds. If we use everything on the plate or in the small cup and we need more of it. So this particular client is not afraid of sparkle. So we're going to use more shooting star or Milky Way than we otherwise would. So it's a little bit more cloudy than we usually go for when we're doing a piece like this. But that's OK, because that's what she's into. We're going to do some Mm, what is this? Breakfast at Tiffany's. The rest of the colors I'm going to use are pastes. So they have kind of a puddingy texture. See, they're very thick. Another red thing about using paste over micas is that using flat micas or micas that don't have a shimmer to them is a real pain. But you can use a paste that has no shimmer or sparkle to it and it's just, the color is way better in my opinion. Very humble opinion. Oh. I think Miss Man's dad's home. She's very excited about it. She waited till you left and then was very hyped. Okay, so we're going to use a translucent white. It's translucent, as in you can see through it. It's kind of a skim milky kind of shade. Um, she may want one of your, any treat that's in there because she's been very hyped. They're in the chewy box. All right, I'm going to shut this window because uh, people that drive in Dallas like to be loud when I'm live. Okay, and our second white is going to be an opaque white, which means you cannot see through it. So it looks like that. I'm watching you, lady. Okay, I forgot I didn't mix these up. Let's mix these other colors up. If you guys would like uh, to join a class on color theory and how to build a palette, then check out my latest blog on my website or sign up for a class where I teach color theory. I'm also teaching a value added class at Rhonda's or RK3's upcoming pro class, not this month, next month. And I'll be going over color theory, harmonies, different kind of color schemes, palettes, etc. That color just mixes in so effortlessly. Fun fact, I used to not be able to say the word effortlessly. Um, there was a lot of effort involved. Okay, so we do have six ounces left of clear resin that I'm going to use probably to make translucent white because this is a big board. This is an 18 by 36 board. We have these on our website, artistilldeath.com. Um, so yeah. Okay, first things first, let's do some underpainting. I'm going to use the Bermuda Bay from Just Resin. To do this, I like to underpaint with resin because when you start to blend and meld out your other colors, this kind of gets mixed in. And so it's kind of just a super easy way to build depth without actually doing that much.
I'm gonna do some white underpainting as well. You can be kind of more crazy with the white because it's less noticeable. And that actually almost looks translucent. I'm gonna have to mix more white into it. Thank you, Clara. Um, the value added class I'm doing down at Rhonda's is a half day and the second half is a Clara resin dye class. All right, that's enough underpainting because I will go crazy with it. All right, we're gonna start with translucent white. We're gonna so randomly just kind of add that around. And while I go, I'm gonna be mixing up more translucent white just in the cup that I have. And so, since I didn't start out with the same big cup of white, my translucent whites are gonna kind of vary in depth, tone, and hue. But that is okay because that is just another way to create really great depth. Also, trust the process. How it looks right now is not how it's going to look. It's going to look great. It currently looks a hot mess. But we're here for hot mess success, right? So I'm gonna put this Milky Way out in just random places, making sure to get some in all of the places that there's a little bit of red so that can shine through a bit. And now we can just go ahead and blend out this crazy background painting that we have going on. Definitely looks like a scary piece. When I look up at the camera angle. All right, so right now I'm just skimming over the top of the piece. The more pressure I add, the more um, color is gonna get picked up, which is great. because then I can kind of move where that color is. But if you don't wanna move any of your undertones, then just lightly skim across the top. Not trying to mix anything, not trying to make any secondary colors. Ultimately, I'm just trying to make sure there's no dry spot left on the surface. Whatever underpainting magic happens while I'm doing this just happens. I'm really trying not to let the aquas take over. Because that's kind of one of the only notes that Tiffany gave me was that she wanted more white that, that was just a repeat note so i'm trying to keep everything on the lighter side and not add too much of the aquas for those who haven't attended one of erica's classes you have a blast and learn so much oh thank you so so much and yes my hot mess success shirts are very popular because that's kind of my mo it's a hot mess it's a hot mess it's a hot mess and then all of a sudden you look at it and you're like crushed it nailed it success all right and get the rest hot mess success is it just just is Well, if you say so, but mostly because I'm a hot mess and sometimes I have successful pieces. All right. 
translucent white. All right. Now, it looks kind of crazy. There's a lot of red popping through. But you're not going to be able to see most of that as we get further into the pour. So I'm going to mix up a dirty pour, basing it in a lot of the translucent white. Just a swizzle of the Tiffany's abalone. Swizzle the Bermuda. Opaque white. The order you put these in really doesn't matter. All these colors will play well together. So you don't really have to concern yourself too much with the separation. I'm going to give a good stir for interest. Pull up some of the colors that sink. And now I'm going to decide where I want to put this dirty pour. I'm not, I'm basically how I decide where, where I'm going to do this is I put it over areas that I'm not that much a fan of. And then after you empty that, mix up a new one. Basically, I'm just adding marbled ribbons through the background painting that we did. I like that phrase, marbled ribbons. Made a little bit more translucent white. adding swizzles as we go not that much what Tiffany I feel like swizzle is a unit of measure hey Gail have you been I had a stick in here. No idea what happened to it. Oh, it's right next to the one I just sat down. Okay. And sometimes I like to add just accent lines with the remainder of my pour where you add the dirty pour uh, I can't remember Tiffany I should note for myself when I watch this later that I should have made more resin. Because things are getting slim. But that's okay. All right. Next dirty pour, definitely need something happening up here. And I think also coming this way. Also, I oftentimes will flip or turn over my dirty pours to kind of get my ribbon from one side to the other. Let me bring you in for a close up to kind of give you a visual of what I just said. So 
So on this one, I noticed a little bit of the aqua coming out right here and I wanted it on top. So right here, I flipped the cup over so that it's more present on the top. I hope that makes sense. Tiff, I don't know if you were here for the beginning of this, but I ran out of the red, the dark red spray paint that I based the last one on. And so I had to use a brighter red, so it's coming through a lot more aggressively than I would have liked. At this point, I can confidently say that I can make the sample piece that was approved, I can make it again. So at this point, since I already have an approved piece, I already know I can remake it. I can kind of add a little bit um, of extra stuff. I added that to break up some of the red showing through. And so I'm going to have to add a couple more lines of just the Bermuda Bay to make it make sense. So I'm just going along the existing design. All right. Obviously, Tiffany, that's a lot of really contrasting aqua and if that is not, um, that wasn't on the approved piece, so don't freak out because it's there on this one. That's our accountant. This almond color has got to be one of my favorites. It's so rich, so beautiful. Sorry if I get distracted while I'm pouring, y'all. Okay. You trust me anyways? Sweet. All right, I do have some white left over, so I'm going to add some larger sections of the white. And all of this resin still has to self-level. It hasn't done any of its own melding. That will happen between now and when it's fully cured. All I'm doing right now is putting the color next to the ones I want them next to. Ultimately, that's kind of all you can control with resin is where the color is. And even then, it's probably going to move. Oh, 
I just love working with resin. All right, let's hit with some heat and see what we got. Last time I used this torch, it wasn't cute. It kind of blew back at me. When you're just popping bubbles, you can use a flame like this, a torch or a heat gun. A lot of times when we do countertops, I'll use an open flame like this because it turns into a flamethrower. Okay. A lot of times I'll use just a flame like that instead of Which way is off? Okay. I'll use that instead of a heat gun because it's just heat. Whereas a heat gun's going to try to push a little bit. It's definitely got a lot going on and is not suitable for all kitchen countertops. Bear in mind, once this goes to scale and is on a larger surface, it's also going to look different. It'll be ultimately a little bit less busy because it's scaled up when it's on an actual countertop. This is going to change a lot. My surface is not exactly level. Let me give you guys a flyover. So this is one of the dirty pores and these are just colors that we put next to each other. Still has all the sparkle in it. Oh, I didn't add my copper. I'm gonna finish this flyover and then we're gonna do the copper accents. And then class will be dismissed. So the approved piece is actually this one. You see how it, all of this ran and shifted. So that's why it's very striated. But if I had all opaque colors, you wouldn't have been able to see any of that movement. Also, it's worth noting, no one comes to me for regular marble or anything that can be found in nature. No one comes to me for... Can I get a nice, elegant, simple white Carrera? People come to me for the loud, the artistic, the sparkly, borderline gaudy finishes. If you want amethyst, marble, come to me. If you want soapstone, I'm not your guy. Unless you want like soapstone with pizzazz, then I can be your guy. Tutor. Okay, so if you guys have never been here for this part, I always use a liquid floating gold on my surface to give a little bit extra dimension. I'll be showing you what it looks like in a second. But I'm letting the propellant soak out of my liquid copper. I don't put it in the actual drinkable side of this Dixie cup because they're usually wax lined and that will prevent any of this soaking in to the cup. I want the propellant to soak out. See the dark that's in there when I do this? That's, that's all propellant. I just want the pigment. 
it has to come with propellant or else it won't come out of a spray can and it has to come with propellant in the little bottles that I have or else it would just dry up in the bottle. But having the propellant in there will make the lines that I draw kind of bloom, stretch, and ultimately could crack. So I'm trying to work out all the propellant so that the line just stays how and where I want it to be. Hope that makes sense. So now that I have some mixed in, I'm gonna find some resin that is just on the edge and do a roadside test. And a roadside test just means I'm testing my this. Looks pretty good. Okay, it didn't bloom too much. So I am gonna mix into it uh, just a little bit of clear resin to further help it just hold on to itself and not uh, split and crack and craze. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit from the spillover. That has white and aqua in it, but it'll be fine. I just put a little bit. There's definitely more paint to resin in this mixture. Now I'm going to add these lines where I see fit. And that could be going through some of the almond like this. It could also be just breaking up something that's a little bit too soft, has too much just light colors going on like this. And I know, I already know that you're probably looking at your screen like, I don't understand. I don't see what it is you're trying to show me. Nothing is looking awesome. Well, give me a second. As soon as I change the, uh, as soon as I change the angle of the camera, you'll be able to see it. So don't freak out ever if you are doing a piece and you drop pigment where you didn't want it, where you didn't expect it. I'm here to tell you that oftentimes accidents end up being my favorite part. Areas that I'm like, mm, I should scrape that off. A lot of times will become my favorite bit. I think people sometimes are too quick to judge their own work. And if they just let it live till like tomorrow when you have like fresh eyes, odds are you're going to like what you created. At least you'll like it probably more than when you walked away from it. Um, statistically speaking. Do I sound so smart when I say statistically and then I try it again and it comes out as statistically? All right, I'm almost done with this part so it won't be boring for much longer. And I do believe that Tudor is here. Um, if you've ordered from my shop lately, you know that I am short on a lot of things, but also I have all companies on order. The next to be delivered should be Color Obsession. Canvas has found Tudor. All right, so let's see what we have, shall we?
Sorry about that. Okay. So this is the floating copper that I added. I like to add just veins that come up and hit when the light is a certain way. Like this one. And also you can see that the white has sunk and it's already settled and flowed this way. So it's rolling over that aqua since we have translucence everywhere. It's creating even more depth in the piece. Yeah, the majority of that order, uh, Melissa, is tense. So I have a full restock of tints coming. Unfortunately, Color Obsession is one that takes a little bit longer than the others to come in. So you can barely see the red peeking through, but the red next to the aqua will make the aqua look brighter. For an example, this aqua and this aqua are the same. But in different lights, they look different colors because one is next to the red. I don't like how that looks, so I just had to mess it up. Woo! Well, come on over, Miss Emma. So, yeah. I love it. I know it's a lot of motion and it's busier than what a lot of people would prefer but you know what um take my recipe take it home and come up with your own version of this thank you claire for listing the colors thank you mods for being on troll patrol and thank you everyone for coming in and watching today I hope you learned something, were entertained, or otherwise educated. And now I will show you puppies. There's one. Hi, big dirty canvas. Um, I also expect the just resin pigments in the next seven days tops. They're really good about getting things to me. Bowie just got a haircut. Can you tell? Bowie. Did you get a haircut? Yeah. What are you doing? I know she has gotten so big. What's up, Kim? I also am about to put in an order with Kim with uh, Color Passion. And so that will be here very soon. Anyways. You guys are amazing. Thank you for coming in and seeing what we're up to today. It really means so much to me that you guys take times out of your day to join me for mine. You guys are amazing. Please share the word if someone is looking for pigments, send them to my shop. And if someone wants to learn resin, send them to my YouTube. Please subscribe. Leave me your thumbs. And we'll see you guys tomorrow for our 2 o'clock Tuesday where we go to the color box to pick our palette for the day. You guys are amazing, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Be kind to one another because you never know what someone's going through. And always remember. He's coming. He's taking his time. I too, so you don't have Erica Thornton does the tests. <gasps> That's me, so you don't have to. We love you guys. <laughs> Bye.